Welcome to this Christian Patriot News Update. Today is Saturday, September 11th, 2021. This is the 20-year anniversary of the horrific attacks on the Twin Towers in downtown New York City. On the eve of this anniversary, our favorite president stated, I do believe they're going to decertify the 2020 presidential election, and that will mean reinstatement of Donald J. Trump to his rightful position as President of the United States of America. Personal loans are the most popular way to get much needed money into Americans' pockets. Personal loans are great for consolidating debt, don't require collateral, and can improve your credit score. Finding the right personal loan for your situation, however, can be tricky. This is why I highly recommend to get a Zippy Loan. They offer an expansive network of lenders that provide you with premium access to personal loans. This site offers personal loans between $100 and $15,000, which can be directly deposited into your bank account as soon as the next day. Find out the personal loan amount you're qualified for by going to www.getazippyloan.com. It's the first link in the description box below this video. And remember, when you support my sponsors, you're supporting this frontline soldier. Let's take a moment to remember those who were lost on September 11th, 2001. This is a tribute video narrated by Donald Trump released by Save America. Watch this two minute clip and I'll be right back. We grieve together for every mother and father, sister and brother, son and daughter who was stolen from us at the Twin Towers, the Pentagon, and here in this Pennsylvania field. We honor their sacrifice by pledging to never flinch in the face of evil and to do whatever it takes to keep America safe. In the wake of the September 11th attacks, courageous Americans raced into smoke, fire, and debris in Lower Manhattan, the Pentagon, and a field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. The whole world witnessed the might and resilience of our nation in the extraordinary men and women of the New York Fire Department and the New York Police Department. Earlier this year, we fully reauthorized the Victims' Compensation Fund to the tune of billions and billions of dollars. When the World Trade Center came down, I saw something that no place on Earth could have handled more beautifully, more humanely than New York. And the cleanup started the next day, and it was the most horrific cleanup probably in the history of doing this and in construction. I was down there, and I've never seen anything like it. I've seen two huge 110-story buildings that are reduced to rubble, uh, thousands and thousands of lives. I just got to see something that I've never seen before. I have hundreds of men inside working right now, and we're bringing down another 125 in a little while, and they've never done work like this before. We come here in the knowledge that we cannot erase the pain or reverse the evil of that dark and wretched day. But we offer you all that we have, our unwavering loyalty, our undying devotion, and our eternal pledge that your loved ones will never, ever be forgotten. Now, when you consider this article, I want you to ask yourself a very important question. Has our favorite president ever made an allegation that didn't end up being true? President Donald J. Trump says, I do believe they are going to decertify the election. President Trump just dropped bombshell news on the matter of election integrity by predicting that officials will decertify the 2020 presidential election. Discussing consequences for the rigged election, Trump told the Gateway pundits Jim Hoff during a Friday afternoon interview, I do believe they are going to decertify the election. 
They know it was rigged, he added, after a week of damning reports alleging vast voter irregularities in Maricopa County. Addressing the Arizona canvassing report published by Liz Harris, which claimed that the number of lost votes identified in Maricopa County is 173,104. Now, if you didn't see my previous update, make sure that you get yourself caught up because I cover all of this in great detail in my previous update. You can find it in the description box below this video. 173,104, or the equivalent of nearly three Sun Devil stadiums, she said, during an interview on Steve Bannon's War Room this week. 2.5 times that stadium is the number of people in Maricopa County whose votes were lost. In addition to missing votes, the report also identified 96,389 ghost votes, which are described as mail-in votes that likely could not have been physically cast by the voter that the vote was registered to because of address changes. These voters did not have a secondary mailing address and were either unknown to the residents who lived at their voting address since September 2020 or were known but confirmed to not have lived at the residence since prior to the election and often had not lived there for many years. The combined number of lost and ghost votes as well as many more inaccurate votes were discovered by canvassers brings the number of total vote discrepancies to 269,493, and that's just one county in the state of Arizona. A state that was allegedly won by China Joe by just 12,000 votes. Trump called Liz Harris a patriot for her findings, praising the report that alleges hundreds of thousands of lost or ghost votes. On the matter of Arizona, Trump said, I lost a very close number but we were way up ahead, and someone is going to have to ask Fox News about their curious early call for Arizona to go to China Joe. Personal loans are the most popular way to get much needed money into Americans' pockets. Consumers choose personal loans over other types of loans like title and home equity loans because they offer the most flexibility with the most freedom at the lowest rates in the industry. Personal loans are great for consolidating debt, they don't require collateral, and they can improve your credit score. Finding the right personal loan for your situation, however, can be tricky. This is why I highly recommend to get a Zippy Loan. They offer an expansive network of lenders that provides you with premium access to personal loans. You'll be connected to lenders within minutes. They offer personal loans between $100 and $15,000, which can be directly deposited in your bank account as soon as the next day. The process is simple, secure, transparent, and takes as little as five minutes. Find out the personal loan amount you're qualified for today by going to www.getazippyloan.com. It's the first link in the description box below this video. I highly recommend getazippyloan.com. And remember, when you support our sponsors, you're supporting this frontline soldier. Our favorite president has been talking a lot lately. He's been conducting a lot of interviews. This interview yesterday with the Gateway Pundit, in my opinion, is one of his best interviews in several months. It's going to start off with under his presidency, we had the greatest economy in history, we were energy independent, the record tax cuts, and then he's going to compare China Joe and how we left $85 billion in military equipment to equip the Taliban army. He says there's never been a period like this in the history of our nation. He'll discuss inflation and then he'll move on to the 2020 presidential election, specifically the canvas results in Maricopa County, Arizona. He says, our media is corrupt. 70% of Americans believe the election was tampered with. They use COVID for mail-in ballots to rig an election. And then he'll say those beautiful words, I do believe they are going to decertify this election. And Joe's gonna ask, what happens when the states decertify? He says, well, when you rob Tiffany, 
of their diamonds, you have to return them. So think about the real president being returned to his rightful place as president of the United States of America. Now, altogether, this is a 30-minute interview. These are the best seven minutes. So enjoy this clip, and then we'll move on. Joe, I think you're going to be very happy, you know, because of the campaign finance laws and rules and regulations, which, by the way, are ridiculous. You're not allowed to say, otherwise you have a whole new level of craziness happens. And uh, But I think you're going to be very happy. I think he will be very happy, and I appreciate the question. And, you know, look, they've destroyed what they've done. We had the greatest economy in history. We had so many. We had everything. We were energy independent. We passed more tax cuts than any president's ever passed, regulation cuts, never close, rebuilt our military, gave a chunk of it to the uh, Taliban. Can you imagine all of that stuff that I was rebuilding? We gave some of it, a lot of it. You know, $83 billion is a lot of money. I don't know how they could have. I guess I'm hearing now it's $85 billion. I mean, that, you're talking That's about crazy. numbers. It's one of the That's best right. equipped militaries in the world now. We equipped it. That's right. And I, I, come from the, I come from the corporate world, and we throw around billions of dollars with this government like it's chump change. And there's not many yeah. corporations in the world, as you know, that make a billion a year even. These are such huge yeah. dollars, and what they're doing to our economy now with the spending is just outrageous. That's uh, never – there's never been a period like this in the history of our country. And then they give out money, and, and they uh, – I mean, inflation, what's going to happen with inflation? So I was around during the Jimmy Carter years where they had inflation, where the prime rate went to 22% or something like that. And it was not a good period of time, I will tell you. It was not good. And when you look at what they're doing, look at energy. If you just go with energy, we're $1.87 to over $5 a gallon, right? Yeah. Food prices have doubled, tripled, and quadrupled. Right. The whole mm -hmm. thing is crazy. Yeah, yeah it is. Go ahead, Jim. Well, just one, one final question for me, Mr. President. Uh, we wanted to congratulate you. We believe you were absolutely true about this election. We've been following it. Like Jim mentioned, I'm an auditor by trade. It didn't take an auditor to see that this thing was stolen on many counts. This absolutely. Past, this past week in Arizona, a group led by Liz Harris uh, did some canvassing on their own, a group of citizens in Arizona, and they found, per their estimates, 300,000 ballots that were either counted that shouldn't have been or that weren't counted that should have been. And and yet they're saying Joe Biden won the state by 10,000 votes. Our media yeah. won't share that. and We did, but yeah. the media won't. What, right. what are your thoughts on that? Well, first of all, I appreciate that question. Our media is corrupt as can be. And But the people know what's going on because another poll came out, 70-some-odd percent think the election was, was uh, to put it very nicely, tampered with. So we got 63 million votes, then we got 75 million votes. I was told if we got 64 million, we couldn't lose. We got 75 million. Yeah. The most ever given to a sitting president never happened. Obama went way down. We went way mm. up. We had it won at 10.30 in the evening on Election Day. Everyone, Pennsylvania, we were up by hundreds of thousands of votes. Arizona, all these places. And then those uh, polling counters closed. And when they opened, gee, we were tied. And numbers that were not, it was not even possible to think about losing. By, on election night, this was the greatest rigged election. This is the, the most, that they do well. If they fight wars like they do rigged elections, <laughs> that they do well. And you know what? It's never been a stronger issue. I appreciate you mentioning it because it's never been a stronger issue. The only problem is the press doesn't like talking about it, including Fox. The press doesn't like talking about it. And someday somebody's going to tell me why. Because our election was rigged. This was a rigged election. Yeah. They used COVID and they used the mail-in ballots to rig the election. We won the election by a lot, and they rigged it. And it's a terrible thing. And uh, they, I, I do believe they're going to decertify this election. I don't think you wow. can have an election that was rigged to the extent mm. this thing was – I mean, you look at the individual states. You mentioned Arizona. Right. Look at what hap Look at what's happening now in Michigan. Look at what's happening in Pennsylvania. Look at what's happening in Georgia, Wisconsin. Right. Uh, no, this, this was this is a terrible, terrible. 
thing that happened yeah. to our country. Yeah. And because the press is so dishonest, that's where cancel culture comes from. You know where it started? They don't want to talk about the election because they know it was rigged. They yeah. know, and they just don't want to get, you know, they don't want to have to, because they can't justify the facts. <laughs> and you're right. Liz Harris is a patriot. Yeah. And they went around, I didn't know Liz Harris, they went around all over Arizona and they found hundreds of thousands of votes and in a canvas, which is actually the most accurate thing you can do. Hundreds of thousands of votes. And I lost in a very close number. But we were way up ahead. Remember that? Remember right. when Fox announced Arizona? Yeah. So it sounds like Fox must have known something because we were way ahead. And all of a sudden they announced wow. we were going to lose it. So somebody's going to have to ask Fox whether or not they knew something. Mr. President, what happens if the uh, if these various states become decertified? Any, uh, any thoughts? Well, it's going to be interesting. I mean, you know, when you rob... Uh, the store of its diamonds, I always say Tiffany, and you rob Tiffany of its diamonds and you get caught, you're supposed to return them, and I gotta, wow. among other things, right? But you have to return. Well, a lot of people are talking about that now because uh, you take a look at the, the polls and they, people know what's going on. And, and in Arizona, the reason there's such uh, spirit in Arizona, and now you look at the other states, it's the people, it's not me. The people are rising up, and they're saying, wait a minute, you can, and they're taking rhinos. They're saying, you can't let people get away with this. And people that were rhinos are now leading the charge because they're not going to win in the next election. There's no way no people that aren't in support of a forensic audit like Arizona, and even quicker because, you know, it can't go quicker, but – a strong forensic order. There's no way they can win an office. There's no way they get the primary, and there's no way they're going to win. This has become a very big movement. And then you're going to have to say, well, okay, we caught them cheating. Uh, you're going to let somebody that cheated stay for three more years? I can't imagine it. I can't imagine it. Well, you're right. You're right. Uh, Mr. President, uh, just the last two days, talk about, you know, you're mentioning this last week, the last two weeks, the last month, uh, how much the world has changed. But the last two days, now we have uh, Joe Biden announcing these uh, new vaccine rules. And uh, yeah. so he's forcing a lot of companies um, with, uh, uh, of course, they haven't explained the science behind this, why it's companies with 100 employees and more but not 100 employees and yeah. less you know they don't they don't explain that um but they're they're forcing them to get the vaccine and yet mr president um if you're an illegal alien and you walk across the border today you, you, they're right. not forcing those people to get the vaccine does that make any sense to you or wear masks or anything else or the taliban that's being brought in and don't forget the taliban that's being brought in they rush the planes these are aggressive people. They rush the planes. The people that are coming in are not the people that are supposed to be coming in. These are very strong, aggressive people in many cases. I didn't watch Fox News before I preached this morning, and I'm all amped up. That's not how I work. There's already vaccine passports in New York. That's already happening. There's already a list of close to 200 businesses in Seattle that won't even service you lest you have vaccine proof before walking in the door. We are quickly headed toward a place in our society where the biological medical state micromanages the individual liberty and freedom of people just like you and just like me. I don't think the vaccine's the mark. I don't think you can prove that scripturally. I think it's pretty stupid to say, but I am concerned of our government and its increase in totalitarian, authoritarian oversight that is getting so large that it seeks to micromanage and punish even people of religious faith who object for various reasons. Friend, that's where we are as a country. It's not a conspiracy anymore. I told you all last week I need new conspiracies because all the ones I used to believe are now happening in the world around us. I'm not anti-vax. I'm anti-big government micromanaging your personal life. 
I'm anti a government that's big enough to give you everything you ever hoped, dreamed, or desired and big enough to take it away. I'm against a government that incentivizes people not to work because it thinks it can just print money till kingdom come without any type of economic repercussions. I'm against a government that says trust the science but believes men can be women and women can be men. I'm against a government that seeks to restrict and get rid of the, the free exercise clause and the establishment clause. Those are things I stand against. Today I'll share another article from www.think19.com. That's the word think, the word one, and the number nine, dot com. Or grab your cell phone right now and text the word think to 77222. And best of all, everything on the site is free. All these links are in the description box below this video. This article is entitled The Business of Heaven, Part 5, Figure It Out Fatigue. And as is the case with most of the articles, there's always these beautiful images. The junk drawer. You know, it's funny, but the junk drawer in my house never starts off as being the default place for junk. In fact, it's usually where we put stuff that has real value. But little by little, those few valuable things end up buried under a bunch of stuff, stuff that should have been thrown out. Some people say we're living in an information age. Others say we're in the middle of an information war. Well, someone's been watching Christian Patriot News. Regardless of how you might label it, our world often operates like a junk drawer of its own, constantly bringing us information that crowds out what's most important while burying the few things of real value. In the book of 1 Corinthians, we find the Apostle Paul addressing one of many debates that arose amongst the people of Corinth. The Corinthians had a philosophical reputation, often arguing about what they knew to be true about a given issue. So Paul set the record straight with a lengthy response to the Corinthians. He hits on all the layers surrounding the particular issue at hand. But it's his remarks about the people's knowledge that really stands out in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1-3. through 3. Paul writes, We all have knowledge about this issue. But while knowledge makes us feel important, it is love that strengthens the church. Anyone who claims to know all the answers doesn't really know very much. But the person who loves God is the one whom God recognizes. What a message for the time we're living in today, a time in which information overload, unending arguments, and decision fatigue are all too prevalent. Life is exhausting when you believe you have to figure it all out. It's uplifting when you know the one who already has. Is it wise to be informed to the best of our God-given ability to do all we can in our own power? Absolutely. But at the end of the day, it is our knowledge and trust in the Lord that is going to win out. True knowledge is to know and be known by the Lord himself. Your Father in heaven knows your every need and struggle. He sees them before you even consider bringing them to his attention. Don't get bogged down by the problem you're up against. Don't assume for a minute that it all comes down to what you have to do. Be wise. Lean into the Lord and ask Him to lead you through. I'll invite you to pray with me. If you're able to bow your head and close your eyes, I like to do that, but it's not completely necessary. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we just come before you in humility. Uh, we are sinners, saved by grace through faith in your Son, you, your Lamb who takes away the sins of the world. Father, you are El Shaddai. You are the Lord God Almighty. You are the creator of heaven and earth, of all things seen and unseen. You are the very author of life. And we thank you, Father, that you gave your Son to die for us. We thank you that for those of us who have our faith in Christ, that you've given us the very faith that we have to believe. You see, nobody comes to you unless your Spirit draws them. So right now, Father, I pray that you would draw all men and women hearing my voice right now unto you. 
I pray, Father, that your spirit would move in the hearts and the souls of unbelievers right now and that you would draw them into a personal relationship with you through the shed blood of Yeshua, the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, Christ paid a debt he did not owe. And we owe a debt that we could never pay. But you made it simple. You made Christ, your son, the perfect sacrifice for sin once and for all time. And when we put our faith in your son, his perfection gets credited to our account and our sin debt is paid in full on the cross at Calvary. So right now, Father, I just pray that anyone who's hearing my voice right now who has never confessed that Jesus Christ is Lord would do so right now. Your word says that we, if we confess with our mouth and if we believe in our hearts that Jesus Christ is Lord and that you raised Jesus from the dead, we will be saved. So right now I just pray that sinners who have never confessed that Jesus Christ is Lord would do so right now and pray something just like this. You don't have to say these words exactly, but try to repeat after me and you can rewind this if you need to. But just say something like this, Father, I don't know you, but I do believe that your son died for me. I do believe that you love me and that you proved it when you gave your son to die, to pay my sin debt in full. And right now, I put my faith and my hope and my trust in your son, your lamb who takes away the sins of the world. In this moment, I turn from my sin. I turn from my unbelief and I turn to you and I put my faith in my Lord, my Savior, Jesus Christ. And I thank you, Father, that you gave your son to die for me. I thank you, Jesus that you laid down your life for me. I thank you, Father, that in this moment I'm truly born again. The old has passed away. Behold, all things have become brand new. And I thank you that now I am a brand new creation in Christ. It's no longer I who live, but now Christ lives through me. I know that if anyone is ashamed of you in this sinful and this adulterous generation, so too will you be ashamed of them when they come before your Father in heaven. So I admit right now that I am not ashamed of the gospel because the gospel is the power unto salvation, which is eternal life for all who believe. So my faith is in Christ. I thank you, Father, for eternal life. And I'm excited to one day meet you face to face and to meet your son and all of my brothers and sisters and all of the angels in your eternal paradise. I thank you and I will praise your name always and forever. I pray these things in the name of my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I hope you enjoyed this update. I hope that you benefited listening and I hope that you were inspired. I am 90% listener supported. I receive next to no monetization anywhere. And I just started adding advertisements in the last couple months. Please support this frontline soldier. I've got links to Give, Send, Go. That's a new Christian fundraising site. The Cash App and BuyMeACoffee.com, all in the description box below this video. U.S. residents use any of those links. International residents, you have to use Give, Send, Go or BuyMeACoffee.com. They accept all currencies anywhere in the world. If this information is not in your screen or if the links aren't in your description box, or if the links don't work, it's no trouble. Simply visit www.givesendgo. That's givesendgo.com. And click on the search icon. Enter my name. It's Christian Space, Patriot Space News, and I'll come up. Thank you in advance for your incredible generosity. I cannot do this without you. And together, we will win, especially the good fight of faith in our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. For those of us who put our faith and our hope and our trust in him. Thanks for watching.